Nobody really knows who did the first drum solo. Uh, historians say that uh, people like Chick Wedd, uh, Baby Dodd, Zooty Singleton, they all did like breaks. But the guy that really did the solo first and brought the drums out front and made the drums a solo instrument was Gene Krupa, my idol. I mean, I used to know every note he played on every record. In the movie, I had the soundtrack, I had it all. So it's really great for me to host this next video we're going to show you, or should I say the first video, uh, where Gene Krupa actually teaches Salminio some of the, his tricks for the movie. Gene. One thing before we start, you know, working on the numbers, is one thing that's been a dream of mine for so many years. You know, uh, what I'd like to do with you? Yeah, I think I know. You want to whale. You want to have a jam set. Yeah, man, I'd give anything to whale with you, can't uh, we? Sure. Let me step down a little dive here. And really start me. swinging, huh? All right. Okay. Getting to play one of the all-time great drummers is an honor. But jamming with Gene Cooper, oh, man, that's the living end. So the next clip we have is a clip of Shadow Wilson, who was a drummer that played with John Coltrane in the 50s. This clip we have was from the mid-40s of Shadow Wilson playing with Louis Jordan. When the dance begins, we'll take a little spot right near the band. Get out, kicks to mellow in, just dig in the beat of the drummer man. Haley and the Comets, Rock Around the Clock was number one everywhere. There was a big song. They put rock on the map with this one, okay? Bill Haley's drummer, Ralph Jones, rocks out, man. He was he was a great drummer. And I saw them when I was a kid at the Brooklyn Paramount at the Alan Freed show, and they were just fantastic. <laughs> Ella Fudge and Ginger Baker and the Cream started around the same time. We used to do a lot of gigs together. And, uh, you know, he always thought of himself as a jazz drummer. He always played light. He was never really a pounder, but he played some great stuff in there. Obviously, his solo on Toad, which made him famous with the Cream, uh, with Jack Bruce and Eric, you know, Eric Clapton, uh, had a definite influence by uh, Baby Dodds and probably Krupa a little bit, too.
let's move on to another buddy of mine, um, Danny Serafine from Chicago. They started in 1968. It was a whole new era of rock, and it was all inspiring and really cool. And all kinds of elements would join together to make rock, you know, something new. And Chicago was not different. They had horns that were like jazz horns that influenced the rock rhythm section with Danny in it. And they, they created like this uh, sort of jazz rock thing with horns, and uh, it was great. came across a great drum solo by Grand Funk Railroad's Don Brewer. Don was influenced by a bunch of friends of mine, Dino Dinelli, Buddy Rich, John Bonham, and his incredible style and technique on this 1974 solo really shines through. Okay, that was me 31 years ago. I was playing at the time with uh, Leslie West. The great thing about that solo is that uh, when we played that theater, there was nobody in the audience, not anyone. It was totally empty. And so when I got the audience clapping like that, you know, they told me to do it and they will overdub the audience in there. I, I tell you the truth, after they finished doing it, I was so surprised how good it came out that uh, it blew me away. Lastly on the DVD now is Neil Peart, the great Neil Peart. He joined Rush in 1974 and uh, came to fame shortly after that. I mean, Rush were like the trio of trios, the rock trio, you know, bass, drums, and guitar. And Neil, you know, was great at doing solos. He would bring composition to the solos. Uh, they were experimental with uh, time signatures. Let's watch this clip of uh, the great Neil Peart. Thank you. 